Ajma'in. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send an abundant peace and blessings upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on his family, his companions, and those who follow them in the days of time. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, made it now almost to the first week of the blessed month of Ramadan. What I would like to talk to you about are, number one, our relationship with the Quran this month so that this month can become a month of transformation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that this is the month of his blessed book. When he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ شَهُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرَانِ that this is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was sent entirely. As a guidance to people, as a, a, uh, as a guidance for people, clear signs and direction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala locates our relationship with the Quran in a very beautiful way. And he says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Fala uqsimu bi mawaqi'in wujum, fa inna hu la qasamu law ta'lamun azim, inna hu la qur'anun kareem. Allah swears by the stars. And then he notes that the object of that oath is the Qur'an. Ibn Qayyim said, the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the stars is that the Arabs, yas'aluna ka'ani al-ahilla, qul hiya mawaqitu lin-nasi wal-hajj. Arabs, they would use stars in ancient times as their GPS through the darkness of night. And that the Qur'an and its verses are to be used by the Muslims to guide them through the darkness of their community. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala notes in the Qur'an that nothing can penetrate the truth of the Qur'an, an absolute truth. As he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ذَٰلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That this is a book with absolutely no doubt. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a beautiful hadith, but it's a very good hadith. For those of us in this month who've become the people of the Qur'an, he mentions a very special virtue for them. When he said to his illustrious May Allah be pleased with them. He said to them, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen certain special friends. They became excited. They interjected, who are they? What do they do? And the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ahlullahi ahlul Qur'an wa khasati. That the people of Allah are the people of the Qur'an and those who are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an comes with a tremendous amount of blessing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِكُلِّ حَرْفٍ عَشَرُ حَسَنَةٍ That for each, each letter there are ten hasana. So we did our qiraat. And he explained that okay. so he explained that each letter there is ten hasana. He says something remarkable. He said, So if you say Qul Hu Allahu plus Qul, say many hasana. So if you speak Arabic, To understand the language of the nature of the love that the Arab brothers have in the text, I'm not sure about that. Because I didn't make it. But actually, it's Hawala. The wow is drawn. So actually, it's three letters. So three letters times 10 is 30. So 
some hasana that thirty he said that he said the qaf, he said qaf actually is a symbol of qaf alif ta qaf and well actually is a symbol of well alif ta and lam actually is a symbol of lam alif ta actually the letter is thirty hasana so the letter there are hidden then he said so now how many hasana we said ninety he said no because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he will multiply any good you've done by taking the letter of Quran so actually the reward for the letter of Quran only Allah knows I say that because these are very difficult times the ongoing genocide in Gaza you see the challenges the Muslims face in Syria now you see the situation in Sudan across the globe and now in this country we face election but sometimes it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows the dunya for none of us to fall apart because the dunya is never what made Muslims great the greatness in the dunya was an outcome of being great for after that our ability to impact dunya in a positive way in a beneficial way was because we lived for something greater than dunya. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fi Khalaq al-Mawta wal-Hayata liyabluwakum wa'ayyukum bi-ihsan wa'amala That it is He who created death and life <coughs> to test you. Hold it in your hand, the sister, they don't get any benefit from me or from you. Please speak loudly enough. I know you are fasting, but you have more energy. Please. I think your microphone is fasting. Sam'iya <laughs> Samat, So I think the microphone was fasting. Allah didn't have his gulab jamun. So as I was saying that uh, the Muslim is a little different. That we we don't. I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say. We don't. We don't die to live. We live to die. And. Perhaps the dunya and all of these things around us is beginning to show its fragility as a rahmah from Allah. Because it wasn't the dunya that made us great. It was the akhirah. And it wasn't the dunya that allowed us to do good in dunya. It was because we lived for something greater than the dunya. We didn't compete for dunya. We competed for akhirah. And the outcome of someone who lives for akhirah is they will impact the dunya in a positive way. The outcome of someone who lives only for dunya, as we see all these world powers, now they forgot human rights, they forgot women's rights, they forgot immigrants, they forgot children, they forgot everything when it comes to Palestinians, because they don't live for akhirah, they live for dunya. And when someone lives for dunya, their hypocrisy will be exposed. And so Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمُوا أَيُّكُمُوا أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Who created death and life. Ibn Abbas said, death is dunya, life is an Because we live to die. We don't die to live. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Let those <laughs> compete for this who really want to compete. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Compete, race for Allah's forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ Run to the remembrance of Allah. And unfortunately our ummah, as the Prophet 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna ma yakhsha, what I fear for you is dunya. What I worry about is dunya. Because when we make the dunya our purpose, we will be incapable of functioning as a prophetic community. Why do I say that? Because one of the components of living for the akhirah is the Qur'an. Every page of the Qur'an, the akhirah is mentioned. Mariki yawmiddin, Surah Al-Fatiha. Wa bil akhirati hum yuqinun, Surah Al-Baqarah. Next page. Wa lahum adabun alimun. Next page. Wa quduhan nasu wal hijara. The next page. Wa bashiri alladhina amanu wa aminu salihat. The next page. Wa nahbitu minha jami'a. Every page of the Qur'an, I'm just reading the first six pages, you will find the Akhirah. Why the Akhirah? Because it is so important to keeping us centered. <laughs> and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he said, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharibun aw'abiru sabil. He laid out the path for us. Be in this world as a traveler or a stranger. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi because the traveler or the stranger will never feel comfortable until they return home. And that's why in the Qur'an we find something really powerful. That when Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to Adam and his wife, sometimes he says, Both of you get out of Jannah. But other places in the Qur'an he says, all of you, more than two. Why? Because he's talking to us. Because Jannah, ideally, is our home. In order for us to appreciate what's going on, the Quran lays out for us that there are times that Allah gives and there are times that Allah withholds. In fact, one of our teachers used to say, Man arada an yakun wali Allah. Whoever wants to be the friend of Allah, Two names of Allah. Al-Qabid wal basit The one who expands and the one who restricts. That's actually our entire life. That's why Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَاللَّهُ يَقْبِضُ وَيَبْسُطُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ That Allah gives and Allah withholds and to Him is your return. Like you will live your entire life from this. You will be getting something, something will be kept from you, something will be given to you, something will be kept from you. And whoever lives between this, al Wal-Bast, and they are satisfied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will appreciate that when He gives, He gives, and when He takes, He gives. That's why I see the Ibn Atta'illahi, Iskandri, he says in Al-Hikam, like maybe he gave you, but he kept from you. He kept from something harmful. And maybe he kept from you something you wanted, but it's not good for you. And he gave you. So there are times when the dunya, it reveals its, fictic, its fictitious nature to us. And the outcome of that, the fragility of the dunya being exposed to us, should lead us back to Allah. The last stop. He doesn't say al-nihaya. And Allah says, Allahi Everything goes back to Allah. And that allows us to detach from those things that are unhealthy and attached to Allah. So don't despair, Muslims. If you look in the world today, they took our land, they took our governments, they took our resources, they took our scholars, they took everything, but they didn't take us. As they are attacking the Muslim world, as the Muslim world itself is attacking itself, Sean King becomes Muslim. As they are trying to destabilize the Muslim world and undermine legitimate freedom for people, we see even little John becomes Muslim. And I will say this, that there are other people who I know of who have become Muslim since October 7th who are what would be considered famous who don't want people to know yet. 
And we don't care if it's famous people who become Muslim. Alhamdulillah for anyone who becomes Muslim. Because if you're only happy with celebrities who become Muslim, it means you love dunya. But you understand that Sayyidina Bilal and Sayyidina Umar Sawa. Whoever is guided to Islam, Alhamdulillah, every Friday I'm seeing three, four, five, six, mostly Generation Z accepting Islam. So while the dunya may be falling apart around you, what made you good in the beginning is what will make you good now, and that's Islam. And perhaps Allah is showing us, you want to work for what's broken, where what you need to do is focus on what's been fixed for you. So as one of our teachers used to say, and it doesn't mean we neglect the dunya, wala tansa nasibaka min dunya as the Qur'an says, but we understand dunya la tastaghni anil muslim, lakin al muslim yastaghni anil dunya. That the dunya will always need Muslims. As Alam Iqbal, he said, if Muslims live the Qur'an, the only thing the dunya could say when it sees Muslims is what? But we can live without dunya. What's the proof? Ramadan. What is the purpose of Ramadan? Ramadan is an Eid for the Rabbaniyeen. It's a month for the people of Allah. It's a month to get back to the lost art of Zuhd. To be away from unhealthy attachments. To pull away from things which normally would be bothering us and, and, and causing us to be kind of distracted. And in the backdrop of what's happening in Gaza, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate Gaza, it became even more focused. I talked to a 20-year-old woman a few nights ago. She contacted me. I didn't realize she was 20 because of how mature her letter was written, mashallah. And she met me in my school on a Zoom call. And she said to me, I'm 20 years old. But I watch Muslims at my university. And I realize that young women are being pushed to be immoral and pushed to use their sexuality as their only capital in society, but God has given us more than our bodies. I said, this woman is like, she's ready to take shahada. Where did she get this kind of motivation? Young Generation Z people in the audience tonight? On TikTok, she saw a Muslim. She saw young people who are different, young people who are living for something greater, not young people who are just living for today, young people who are living for tomorrow. Look to what you're sending tomorrow. So every day, every day in Ramadan, I think you're speaking to a pastor. Every day in Ramadan, we're reminded of this point. And if you hear anything I say now, this is what I want you to hear. It's time for Adhan. Jazakumallahu khairan. I was hoping to be able to finish uh, the speech, but it's okay. It's not, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is Salah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad.